everyone and welcome back to my channel my name is Lucy and in today's video I am delighted to be filming my fantasy romance book recommendations so fantasy romance has become a favorite genre of mine over the past year and honestly I think it's a super exciting genre as a lot of you guys might know fantasy is my favorite genre and I also absolutely love romance so smushing these two together to create my perfect genre which is fantasy romance is the best so if you're completely new to the genre and you're like what is fantasy romance basically it is a fantasy book so set in a fantasy setting that has a romance plot at the heart of it so usually any book that has like a predominant romance plot running through it and is fantasy i would class as fantasy romance so it becomes a really broad genre but a lot of the books i'm mentioning today are very strongly on the romance side and just do the kind of fantasy elements really really well whilst keeping the relationship at the heart of the story. So let's just get cracking with the book recommendations shall we because I have some of my absolute favourites. I'm very very excited to share these with you guys. So my first recommendation is The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen. So I read this recently and honestly was blown away. I think this is indie published like it isn't published by a traditional publishing house it might even be self-published but basically The Bridge Kingdom is one of those really hyped fantasy romance books that I've heard a lot about initially I was a little bit put off by the cover of this book it just seemed to me very kind of typical romance fiction where the image on the cover is of a couple kind of embracing and I was just like you know what based on this cover i don't think i'll enjoy this book however i absolutely adored it so the bridge kingdom is based around a woman called lara who is one of the princesses of this kingdom that has basically had this kind of very antagonistic relationship with this rival kingdom for many a year and basically lara's father the king is basically training his daughters to basically kill the prince or the king of the rival country. So Lara is basically offered to the ruler of this rival country as his bride and Lara has to basically intercept and basically bring down this kingdom so that it's easy for her father to invade that kingdom. So all of this actually centers on this bridge, so hence the bridge kingdom. So the bridge kingdom has this incredible bridge, which is basically the number one trade route. So basically all trade runs through this bridge. Like this bridge is like of huge, you know, trade and political importance whoever has the bridge has the power so lara's job is to learn all the secrets about this bridge whatever she can learn and report that back to her father without being caught however as this is fantasy romance you can bet that lara and the person that she's meant to betray this prince of this kingdom they might fall in love they might you know have some great banter back and forth and Lara throughout the whole of this is very much like a hate relationship she's like I need to bring him down and that's what I love this is perfect kind of hate to love romance if you really like an enemies to lovers situation this book really delivers on that so I would really recommend The Bridge Kingdom not only is the romance part of it really really good but the fantasy plot is so well developed and really really interesting I've never read a book where there is this kind of thing in the country that is so important like this bridge which is literally like people will kill for this bridge to have the power of controlling the trade so it's just really interesting politically and honestly this book just hit in all the right places i really would recommend the bridge kingdom for your first fantasy romance read there is also a sequel called The Traitor Queen. I've not read that yet, but I really do want to soon. So I'll keep you guys updated on how I find the sequel. So the next book I really want to recommend is A Deal with the Elf King by Elise Koba. So this is a standalone, I believe. And this is another one where the jacket had me feeling a certain way towards the book before I even had a chance to read it. So don't be swayed by a lot of the, the book jackets on fantasy romance. Anyway, A Deal with the Elf King is a really fascinating book that I absolutely loved and really didn't expect to. So A Deal with the Elf King is the story of a mortal girl called Luella who lives in this world, like this village, where basically 
it's become this tradition that every hundred or so years, I think, elves basically take a mortal person from that village, from that country, to be their human queen. So the reason why they do this is basically because there is this really old kind of magic that dictates that the elf kingdom has to have a mortal queen in order for the land to flourish and basically bring life back to the elf kingdoms. So basically there hasn't been a human queen in Luella's town for a long long time, so much so that Luella kind of thinks, you know what, it's not gonna happen, it's definitely not gonna be me. And here, of course, is the twist in the tale where she's basically chosen to be the human queen and King Eldas, I think that's his name, basically arrives in her town and claims her for his own. So basically, this is a amazing story of romance, the natural world, excellent kind of like elf traditions, which I really enjoy, and just pure magic. It's just pure magic. So I must say this is less adult, fantasy romance, I think this is more on the YA side. It definitely read as a YA book to me, where the British Kingdom is definitely more adult. But A Deal With The Elf King really took me by surprise because not only was the fantasy element, the actual world building, this magical world, you know, exploring the magic system, all of that was really well developed, but the romance was so lovely. And Eldas is just like, bae, you know, like, fey, bae, loved it. He was just like such a surprise and I loved his and Luella's relationship. It was a very slow burn and honestly guys, this book was great. So this is a standalone but I do think it's part of a series where there is this kind of like married to magic theme where basically there is the kind of marriage of convenience or arranged marriage or forced marriage trope. That's what I think. I don't think the second book in the series is out yet, but I will report back when I've read that. Okay, so here's where things get a little bit predictable. Bear with me because I have two fantasy romance books that you probably will have heard of, but I really wanted to recommend because they're my favourites. What can I say? First up is the classic, A Court of Thorns and Roses. So yes, I know, you've probably all read this, you probably all know about it. If you have not yet read a Court of Thorns and Roses, and you want to get into fantasy romance, or you're a fantasy romance fan looking for your next hit, and you just didn't think this would fit your bill, you know, you didn't think this book was for you, definitely give it a try. It will surprise you, because I actually think this is a lot more accessible than Sarah J Maas's other series, which is the Throne of Glass series. The Akatar series, or A Court of Thorns and Roses, is my favourite series ever. I absolutely love it. The fantasy romance elements are so good, so swoon-worthy, and basically this book, if you are completely new to it, is about a girl called Feyre, and Feyre is a mortal woman who lives with her father and sisters, and they are very, very poor, and basically Feyre is the only one in the family who can hunt and actually feed them, so she goes out hunting, she accidentally kills what she thinks is a wolf, Turns out it isn't a wolf, it is a fae, and as punishment for that crime, she is taken by a fae called Tamlin, and Tamlin is cursed. So this is, of course, a Beauty and the Beast retelling, so there are kind of themes of Feyre having to understand this curse and working out how to break it, essentially. So it is incredible, and let's just say the series really kind of departs from this book. I feel like this book is very kind of traditional fantasy and very traditional fantasy romance but I feel like the other books in the series just completely go to a whole other level like they are amazing and the books just get better and better in my opinion so I really would recommend A Court of Thorns and Roses. The next fantasy romance book I want to recommend is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So The Cruel Prince is one of those classic fantasy romance books that you will have seen recommended everywhere. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I think you'll all know a lot about it already, but let me just tell you, if you are hesitant to read this book because you just think, you know what, there's been too much hype, please read this because I was exactly the same as you, where up until last year I had not read this series and then last year I was like, you know what, I'm going to read The Cruel Prince and boy was I just like blown away by this. The Cruel Prince follows a girl called Jude who actually lives in the fairy realms but Jude is a mortal girl and all she wants to do is be 
a fairy. Like all she wants to do is fit in to the fae world. And she sadly can't, like she is always the mortal, even though her father who kind of looks after her is a very high profile fae. Jude will always just stick out and she becomes the focus of attention from a prince in the fairy realms called Prince Cardan. And Cardan basically sets out to just destroy Jude's life. And they're basically become entwined in this very hate to love relationship. And let's just say the relationship aspects to this book are, I love them so much. I am just a huge fan of Jude and Cardan's relationship. It's perfect. So if you're looking for a fantasy romance hit, this will definitely do the job. The next book I really want to recommend is Captive Prince by C.S. Pacat. So you may have heard me talk about this book before on my channel, but basically this is definitely very dark fantasy romance and very adult fantasy romance. So just a little disclaimer, if you're kind of, you know, looking for something a bit more romantic and light and fluffy, this isn't the book for you. So Captive Prince follows a man called Damon who is a prince of this kingdom. And basically when his brother deposes him, so basically, you know, Damon is basically in line for the throne, but when Damon's brother basically takes the throne for himself, Damon is sold into slavery to a rival nation where he catches the eye of Prince Laurent. So Damon is a slave under Laurent and Laurent has no idea about Damon's true nature, the fact he is a prince and heir to the throne of his rival nation. So they have this kind of stirring relationship where they're very intrigued by each other. There is this like kind of static electricity between them and they both are just like intrigued by each other. But Damon knows who he is all along and he knows that he needs to kind of get out of there so that he can take back his throne. So it is a very like intense fantasy series. There's definitely no magic in this world, I don't believe. And it's very traditional fantasy, but it feels more Roman or Greek or something. Um, but it's just an incredible fantasy romance read. And honestly, like, I feel like I need to reread this series because I just was obsessed with it when I was reading it. So I would urge you all to read Captive Prince and have your heart broken and your mind blown. And finally, I think the next one is also a very predictable choice, but bear with me. A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So this is the second book in the From Blood and Ash series. So it is the series as a whole I am recommending. The reason why I'm holding this one up is because I only have the physical version of this book. I read From Blood and Ash on my Kindle. So if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you will all know my thoughts about From Blood and Ash. I was not in love with the first book. Everyone seemed to be hyping this book up and I was really confused because I was like, there's a very lackluster fantasy plot, there's a very lackluster romance plot, like, you know, what's going on here? Why is it being so recommended? And then I got to the end of From Blood and Ash and my little mind was blown. And I was honestly like, okay, now I get it. And I'm almost finished with this book right now, which is the second book in the series. And guys, it's so great. Like, it's awesome. Like, I finally know what the hype is about, you know? So if you're completely new to this series, you have no idea what it's about. From Blood and Ash is the story of Poppy, who lives in this world where she is basically considered to be this thing called a maiden. There's only one maiden, and she is basically revered as being chosen by the gods. But because she's chosen by the gods, she needs to keep herself pure, she can never be seen, so she wears a veil. And she lives a very cloistered lifestyle. And basically she is meant to be pure, so she can't hook up with any hot guys. Like that's forbidden, you know? But then she has this kind of situation with this mystery man who she doesn't really know who he is. She kind of has a dalliance with him. And then he turns out to be her bodyguard and he's appointed as her bodyguard. And she is like, oh my God, he is so hot. Like, we have such a bond and she begins to develop feelings for him. And let me just say, the world as a whole is really, really interesting. Basically, there are rival nations and Poppy is known to fear this group of people called the Atlanteans who are basically like these evil soulless creatures and they are threatening the way of life in that kingdom and Poppy is terrified of them. Like the whole, you know, she's basically been told that these Atlanteans are, 
evil, you know? And they threaten their entire existence. So it's a very supernatural-esque fantasy romance where there are different creatures, there are different kind of like species of people, I guess. It just gives me Twilight vibes, but more adult Twilight vibes, you know? The romance in the first book is very, very slow burn, but by the second book, oh boy, is the romance there. Like it is spicy and it's great. So if you have finished the first book, I really would recommend starting the second book because everything just picks up to a different level and I am enjoying this book so much more. So guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed these recommendations and if you did, please do make sure you hit that subscribe button and that way you won't miss any more videos from me. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.